Today we're going to be checking out the Kingroon KP3S Pro. And it looks like we've got some linear rails here. These are very well greased and they function really well. So first impressions are pretty good. This seems to be a pretty high quality machine. It ships in two pieces. After attaching these four screws, it looks like everything's all put together. That was extremely easy. We got a sturdy little machine here. The next thing I'll want to do is put the lead screw in. And using the provided Allen wrenches, I'll just tighten this down. That only took about five minutes to put together. It says to tighten up these nuts down here. That So we'll go ahead and tighten those up. The way this machine is set up, it's actually really easy to access these nuts. All you got to do is just reach in from the side here, and they're nice and easy to make adjustments to. On some other machines, these are really tucked away underneath the bed and it's really hard to make adjustments. Even though on a spec sheet, a larger printer will be more impressive, something like this is just super easy to work on, assemble, and play around with. So we're ready to plug this in and turn it on. So let's peel off this little touch screen sticker. Now, one thing I'm noticing right away about this machine is it's got a relatively loud fan that spools up immediately. I think a majority of the fan noise is coming from this power supply fan. And then in the top here, we also have another fan. I'm going to turn on the part cooling fan just to see how loud that is. It's almost like it's a little speaker. Fan at 50%. A lot of that noise can be forgiven if this thing has great print quality. All of these test prints are in Chinese, so I don't know what they're going to do. Oh, geez, that's scary sounding. Actually, I need to do the bed leveling first. You can see the belts are touching the bed here. So when this comes down to make contact with the bed, these belts touch first, and that's a real issue. We're going to have to fix that. At the very least, we're going to have to cut off this rubber piece that's extending past the brass piece. But also, I think it would be better if this brass piece was a little bit shorter too. So I'm going to go ahead and trim that down. Oh geez, uh, the brass piece came loose from this belt now. Alright, I secured a replacement belt from one of my old Ender 3s. This is from the Ender 3000. If you've seen that video, then you're a true mega fan. So I'll just pull this old belt out, undo this tensioner thing. Then we've got to fish the belt in through the side. Then I've got to loop it around this x-axis pulley somehow. So this is obvious to me that they didn't test this machine before they sent it out. I don't know if there's any companies out there that actually test their printers before they ship them. I think it actually might be the case with some American companies like uh, Project R3D. They'll test their machines out a little bit before they send them out. But all these Chinese companies, they're kind of of the opinion that they're getting the cost down as much as possible. And one of the things that gets cut often is quality control. It's kind of shameful if you ask me. You should be making sure that your stuff works before you send it out. All right, we should be back up and running now. Here you can see the little belt that I created. So I basically just folded the belt back over itself so the timing belt teeth interlocked with each other. And then I got a little piece of belt material that I cut out and put it on either side and then zip tied around that. And now we have a functioning belt. We're up and running again, so let's get this thing leveled and hopefully we'll get some prints tonight. This Z homing is a little bit slow, but it's getting the job done one little bit at a time. Eventually it'll touch the little end stop down there. Huh. Or not. Okay. Let's give this a little adjustment then. This is interesting. When I lift this up to back drive it, you can see the stepper motor has got a little bit of springiness built into it. I don't know if that's going to affect anything in terms of the print quality, but it is a little bit odd, isn't it? And hopefully we can slide this whole thing down a little bit further. There we go. Now, having a little bit of springiness built into this joint, I'm not sure how I feel about that. I don't know if that'll be good or bad for the print quality, but I guess we'll find that out soon enough. I mean, if I really wanted to eliminate it as a factor, I could just butt these up against each other and that would kind of get rid of that, but I'm curious to see how this turns out. It's a little experiment, if you will. 
So we'll just feed this in up here. Looks like we've got a Titan style geared extruder. Titan extruders are pretty nice. They're not the highest performing since they only have a single drive gear, but they get the job done for most light duty printing applications. All right, the bed's up to temperature now. And would you look at that, the bed leveling is really nice. Looks like we're gonna get a perfect first layer. If you all know about the Perfect First Layer podcast, you should all check that out. It's me, Guy Dunlop from Guy's Woodshop, and JJ Shankles. We're all in the 3D printing YouTube space, and we like to talk about 3D printing topics. On podcasts, you have a little more time to express yourself a little more philosophically. So if you're into that, I'd recommend checking out the Perfect First Layer podcast, and we'll see how perfect this first layer comes out. I hate quality issues. And I hate this fan noise, but from the looks of things, it appears to be a pretty well-built printer. That's one of the other funny things about the podcast is we all have a different point of view. And me and JJ rarely agree on what printer is the best, but it's fun to have those different perspectives. So it looks like the first layer went down fine, and we're just going to switch over to time-lapse mode and watch this thing take form before your very eyes. Well, this print is refusing to come off, despite my um, attempts. So I'm just going to put this PEI sheet on there. King Rune sent this PEI sheet to me with the printer. I'm not sure if this is a standard thing that comes in the box, but I'm sure it's a separate option that you can get if you so desire. We'll redo our bed leveling because this PEI sheet is a lot thinner. One of the issues that you have with these glass beds is when you're smacking it around to get the part off, that's when you can really ruin your bed leveling and then you'll need to go through and do the leveling over again. But after you install a PEI sheet like this, you just pull your prints off super easily so you don't end up needing to do bed leveling as often. I said no files for a second there, that was kind of a little bug, but we're back into business. Let's print out this next thing. And back into time lapse mode we go. All right, so obviously we have a failed print here. And this really just feels like it's going to fall apart. This is just really poor layer adhesion. All of these parts are just so fragile. This is just bad. So something's going on here. I'm going to try and troubleshoot this a little bit. What I think might have failed here is this coupling. So if you look at it really close, you can see it's acting like a spring. It's like boing. I just sliced my finger open on one of these little switches. Shouldn't have been doing that, but in any case, let's zoom in on that little coupler. If I push down on it, it readily kind of moves up and down. That's like having a spring in series with your linear rod. So it doesn't have a lot of control over the Z height here because anything that bumps it is going to move it out of the way. That can cause some real issues like we just saw. So to fix that, I'm going to loosen up these two grub screws, one there and one there. Oh, jeez. And now that those are loosened up, you can see this is free to move up and down. Let this fall all the way down and then tighten it. I think what happened before is I had a little bit of space there. So there's a little play allowing this to bounce up and down. But if I tighten this with the coupler all the way at the bottom, that should help resolve some of those issues. And I'm actually going to lift this up a little bit and tighten it like that. And that'll introduce a little bit of preload. So this coupler shaft is actually going to be pulling this down towards that stepper motor and making sure that that distance isn't going to be changing while I'm printing. All right, now that both of these grub screws are tightened down, we're all good here. And I'm going to just fire up that same torture test. I think it did a really good job at exposing the weaknesses on this machine. So if this has actually fixed anything, just running that print again and seeing if it's able to complete successfully should be a pretty good confirmation that that has resolved the issue. So let's go ahead and print. I think I'm going to increase the print speed 200 to 400%. Let's uh, go right in the middle there and go with a 300% speed increase. All right, so after running this printer for a couple of days, I'm starting to notice some really loud, annoying noises coming from this fan. So just listen to this. 
I know I'm a little bit of a drama queen when it comes to the fan noise that comes out of these machines, but this one's just terrible. So we'll go ahead and turn that off for the rest of the review. After fixing this Z-axis lead screw and butting it up against the stepper motor shaft, this is holding in position a lot better, and I'm not having the same issues that I had with this one where there's clear print quality issues and they were really weak prints. These are much stronger. Ooh. Well, you know, they're relatively strong. I don't know. 3D printed parts are just really wimpy, if you ask me. People just don't know how to design things to be nice and tough. So everything just kind of falls apart. I mean, just look at that. That's just, that's just sad, mechanically speaking. But overall, this is a machine that's got some good bones, but I think it could really use some improvements. The first couple of things that I'd want to fix on this printer are the fans. These are just way too loud. And I'd also like to improve the hot end. Replace it with something a lot lighter and faster. And then also add clipper to this machine. I think if I fixed those three things, this would be a near perfect printer. But let's go over some of the strengths and weaknesses that I've experienced after printing with this machine for a couple of days. This has a 200 by 200 millimeter build area and all of the Ender 3s that I've used have a 220 by 220 build area. That makes this one of the most space efficient printers that I've seen. The spool holder that they use helps save space on the machine and it lets you position the spool off to the side. It's worked really well in my testing, I haven't had any issues with it, but you're going to have to have a flat surface to set these on. It's just these two separate um, kind of bearing blocks that the spool slides on. You know those cardboard spools like these ones. If you have a dent or a chunk missing out of one of these spools, it's not going to work very well on this spool holder solution. So you're just going to have to watch out for that. I think the best solution in the long term would be to mount a spool holder on the wall or on the ceiling and then just feed the filament down into this. The y-axis is relatively light. This little undercarriage plate is made out of steel, but it's pretty thin and they've done a decent job of lightening it up a little bit. Then you've got your standard aluminum heated bed here. So if I wanted to really bump up my print speeds, I'll probably want to install a new hot end assembly just to replace this whole thing and put a larger stepper motor on this y-axis. I always appreciate it when they put all the electronics inside of a metal enclosure. When you're enclosing these electronics in plastic, you run the risk of starting a fire. But now let's get to the cons. One of the huge cons is this fan noise. And I say this about every printer, but this one's really ridiculous. That's clearly a bad bearing. That's something that I would expect them to replace under warranty, it's so bad but I would rather just bypass this whole issue and install a truly silent knock to a fan in there. That'll be a lot better and be a lot more reliable. I found this glass print surface was a little bit too sticky. Fortunately, King Rune provided this King PEI King spring steel sheet. The one thing I don't like about these PEI sheets that have the smooth surface finish is they'll tend to break down after about a hundred prints or so. The sticker will start peeling up off of the surface. That's why I like the textured PEI plates more because they tend to be a lot more resilient to any kind of damage. This machine doesn't feature automatic bed leveling. On most printers, I really don't think automatic bed leveling is a must have, but it really does save you some time when you're having to make constant adjustments to this. I probably spent close to an hour just re-leveling this bed with all of the tweaks and changes that I was doing to it. So, you know, that does get kind of old. The other quality issue that I had with this thing is that the x-axis belt had a little nub sticking down that was preventing me from actually printing with the machine. So that's a quality issue that, you know, that just tells me that they didn't check that at the factory to make sure that this thing actually works out of the box. So, you know, there's little quality issues here or there, and you're going to have to be aware of that in order to get this machine working reliably. Also, there's this little metal tab hanging off of the limit switch for the x-axis, and I was playing around with this and I sliced my finger on it. That limit switch doesn't really need that metal piece because I actually broke it off by slicing my finger oh. on it and it works just fine without that little thing. So I'd say just take that off. Overall, this is a pretty nice machine. 
I really like their use of linear rails and this really wide set V-groove wheel system on the bottom. The further apart you put your V-groove wheels, the more sturdy that axis will be. And I think this solidly built motion system is really one of the best features about this machine. This is the kind of coupler that most 3D printers use, and I think it'll be a lot more reliable and stiff when you're trying to hold that Z-axis in position. What they've used on the King Rune is an improper use of mechanical components, and that will not be forgiven in my reviews. So overall, if you can look past the fan noise and the possible bad belts, you can get a really good printer for not a whole lot of money here. This thing definitely has some pros and cons to consider. I'll leave a link in the description below to where you can find this on Amazon. It's about $210, so it's relatively affordable. And uh, that's about all I have to say about it for now. So I reached out to King Rune and I was like, hey, can you guys send me a KPS-3? And they were like, no, how about you review this PEX build surface first? King Rune, King Rune, King Rune. So I was like, okay, sure, I'll review the PEX build surface. I don't care. King Rune, please send me a KP-3S 